Good afternoon everyone, Happy New Year. I hope you've had a good start to the year and also a wonderful Christmas celebration. This is our first service of the year, the 3rd of January, and we are looking forward to hearing from Bishop Harold today. He's going to be sharing a message with us, uh, but before that, we're going to worship together. So let's get our hearts ready, uh, wherever you are, to worship God and to come into his courts with thanksgiving and praise. Oh, 
Thank you, Mabel, Wale, and the rest of the worship team for leading us in a time of praise and worship. Happy New Year, Church! I greet you with Jesus' joy. To our Fountain of Life family, visitors, and regular online viewers, you are welcome to our online service. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Talking about rejoicing, we had an awesome crossover service on the 31st of December. We were able to worship together, 
to praise God together and thoroughly being equipped to prepare to hit the target in this new year. We thank God for a word in due season from Pastor Remy. By way of announcement, our prayer portal will commence again. From Monday to Thursday, from 8 p.m. to 8.30 p.m., we'll be praying together and the family of the week will be Sister Kathy's family. Birthday greetings to you, Pastor Bright, who was a year older on New Year's Day. Yes, the 1st of January. We declare and we pray God's blessings and favor on you, Pastor Bright. May you go from strength to strength and from glory to glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we declare. For our church members who are wishing to give their tithes and offerings, please look out on the FRLC announcement platform. The account details will be posted there and you will be able to pay your tithes and offerings electronically. God bless you. We know that we will continue to experience God's blessings and provision in Jesus' mighty name in this new year. Our God will supply all our needs according to his riches in glory. This is the time in the service where we look forward to hearing the, God, the word of God, what God has to speak to us. We know that God's word is powerful and it is alive. And the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, that God's word is alive, it is active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates, dividing between the soul and the spirit, joint and marrow, and a discerner of the intents of the heart. So God's word is transforming me, and I believe that God's word is transforming you. So to bring the word of God to us today, we have a vessel of honor, a leader of leaders, a pastor of pastors, our very own Bishop Harold Presley. We pray that you will be blessed as you hear the word of God today. Hello, Fountain of Life, Pastor Remy, and all you wonderful people, delight to be with you. Even if it's in this format, I'm still happy to be with you. I do look forward to when I can say Happy New Year to you in person. Uh, Hugging neck, shaking hands, that may not be too soon. But anyway, uh, at least uh, be there uh, face to face. That's very important. And uh, delighted also to be with you on this first day of 2021. 2021 is simply a number on the calendar. Uh, our life and our times are in God's hand because it's in Him that we live and move and have our being. Nonetheless, we're still on planet Earth, and uh, we're still spinning around the sun. So uh, we do measure things according to weeks and months and years. And uh, this, therefore, is a new season of time for us. So we want to engage and enter into it in such a way that we have great success, that we have good blessing, and most of all, that we're pleasing to God and we are somehow a blessing and productive in our engagement with people and citizens and uh, the whole of society, really. So to get down to some uh, important aspects of that, we have to turn to God's Word. I'm going to be reading from uh, Exodus chapter 25. And... Uh, let me just set it up for you briefly um, to just point out that uh, from around uh, chapter 24 right through the end of the book of Exodus, which is chapter 40, right that whole section is all about God giving special instructions to Moses and Joshua for a tabernacle and th that would include even instructions in how the people would worship God, how they would make sacrifices to God to appease him, to bring, uh, to offload their own sin and their own guilt, and therefore to be able to have his blessing. The tabernacle was, uh, it's an old word that simply meant uh, place of meeting. And... Uh, it was built in such a way that it was mobile because they were going to be traveling and God wanted 
his presence to be with them wherever they were. This was critical because in the very beginning, as we read history, we read scripture, we see that indeed God would meet with Adam and Eve in a very natural way, as if he were taking a stroll with them, meeting face to face, no barrier, no filter, no mediator was required. God could just come and be with Adam and Eve and meet with them. But when they rebelled against God, decided to do things their own way, they uh, lost that paradise and, uh, and they were separated from God. God met rather randomly with people. Uh, he would uh, select people to meet with and then there would be somebody that just happened to be seeking God and they had a heart for the things that were more holy and sacred and God would meet with them. Anyway, at this point in, in history that we're going to be reading in Exodus, God had decided he had to set up a way that his presence could be with man. You see, God is too holy He's too powerful. His majesty is so much greater than ours. Even his love is so extreme that his full presence with humanity uh, would, would wipe us out. We couldn't handle it. So he had to have a means to meet with them. So he set up this rather elaborate and complex thing the tabernacle and he gave all kind of instructions there was the outer court and the inner court and the holy of holies and there was different furnishings I'm just going to read and focus on one of those things today because the Lord has ministered to me about that and that is the piece of furnishing called the lampstand now before we before we get into that uh, again it's important for us to recognize this was before Christ had come God came into humanity through the form of Jesus, his only son. Uh, that Therefore, the name Emmanuel, you've probably, during the Christmas season, you read about that, studied about that, preached about that some. Emmanuel was one of the names or titles given to Jesus, uh, which simply means God is with us. That was significant because it was through the, the flesh or the humanity of God in Jesus Christ that God could meet with all of humanity and of course then Jesus had to become the ultimate sacrifice and his sacrifice for our sin and, and rising from the dead you know it's it's so majestic and it's so complex and yet from yours and my standpoint it's simple <clears throat> God's big we're small God's other than us in every way but we need him. He is the only one that can give life. Jesus said about himself that he is the way, the truth, and the life. So we need that life here. We, he is our creator. He started this whole thing rolling. He's the reason you and I are alive today. And he has a marvelous future with no end, an eternal marvelous future for us and we want to tap into that. We can only do that through Jesus. Once we come to know Jesus, <clears throat> once we have surrendered to him simply by trusting and believing that he is the son of God and surrendering our life to him through the most simple prayer, <clears throat> any, almost any kind of prayer, but the prayer that just communicates, uh, I thank you, I want Jesus in my life, I surrender myself to you any kind of prayer that communicates that basic thing to God, then we become born again and the life of Christ comes in us. Then no longer do we need a place of meeting, but rather we are the meeting place because that's what tabernacle means. That's what temple, that was in the New Testament, they use the word temple. And in fact, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, the Bible tells us that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So <clears throat> it's a beautiful thing. That's the significance of reading the original plan and the original uh, design of the tabernacle and all the furnishings 
which is, a, is quite a full study that we're not getting into all of that. But the reason for that is it shows the original purpose and design that we ourselves are. It shows and reveals how God wants to meet with us. And if we ever needed to meet with God and God to meet with us, it is now as we're entering this new year. It's now as we're leaving 2020 and all the bad things of 2020, leaving them behind and moving into what God has. If we ever needed to meet with God, it's now. <clears throat> and this lampstand is a significant thing, I believe, uh, because it, it has to do lamp, doesn't lamp, light. It has to do with enlightenment. So with that in mind, let's turn to Exodus uh, way back in the beginning of your Bible, second book in the Bible, and I'm reading from Exodus chapter 25, verse 31. The Bible says, Make a lampstand of pure hammered gold. Make the entire lampstand and its decorations of one piece, the base, center stem, lamp cups, buds, and petals. Make it with six branches going out from the center stem, three on each side. Each of the six branches will have three lap cups shaped like almond blossoms, complete with buds and petals. Craft the center stem of the lapstand with four lap cups shaped like almond blossoms, complete with buds and petals. There will also be an almond bud beneath each pair of branches where the six branches extend from the center stem. Are you still there? It's elaborate. It's detailed. <clears throat> but I'm reading it in, in its entirety, which is a couple more verses. I'm reading it also to, let, to remind me and to rem remind you God's plan for your life is detailed and elaborate. It's greater than you or, or I could ever imagine. And so, yeah, it's just beautiful. So there's an almond bud, uh, each pair of branches. Uh, uh, verse 37. Then make the seven laps from the lapstand and set them so they reflect their light forward. The lap snuffers and trays must also be made of pure gold. You will need 75 pounds of pure gold for the lampstand and its accessories. God has accessories for you. <laughs> I love it. God created you and he wants to accessorize you so that you shine. All right, all right. And then the last verse there uh, just says, be sure that you make everything according to the pattern I have shown you here on the mountain. Okay, now, <clears throat> I just want to make application. And this is the type thing. I, I love it. You could study things like this in the scripture. You could come up with 10 sermons without repeating yourself, you know, or, or just going over the same truths over and over. It's beautiful, God's word. It's, it's alive. It's living. But just a few things that I want to point out. And I'm sharing this because, uh, man, have I ever been praying about what's next and what the future is. And when we think about the future, uh, that's when we truly need light. If anything is dark to us, it's, it's tomorrow. We don't know, do we? We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know how many of us uh, can already look back on things that we've gone through. If I, I never had a clue this would happen. I never knew that would take place. So we really need light and a, 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 a flashlight, a torch, the, the, the light that swips, switches on the bulbs in my house, it, that's not the kind of light I need. It's something greater than that. So just, uh, you can read back over that to, to get the details yourself, but I'm gonna uh, sort of uh, extrude some of them, if you please. <clears throat> First of all, it's a light with seven lamps on it, okay? And I've already mentioned the whole thing of being enlightened. It's an enlightenment that comes uh, from the divine, from the holy supernatural, from heaven. It's that kind of light that needs to be shown. It is seven of them showing that it is perfect and entire 
and complete. That's the, 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 num the number seven represents perfection or completion. So we can see that it will be a light that is definitely giving God's perspective and showing God's way forward. <clears throat> it, uh, that uh, seven also uh, makes us think of the seven days of a week. And uh, so that's a full cycle of time and uh, lets us know that God has our f the full framework of our time and our seasons in mind and he wants to reveal to us through his light exactly what will happen every day, every week. Uh, it's also meant to burn continually. Uh, we didn't read that in the section of scripture, but if we, if we just go over uh, a chapter and a half over into 27, you see that that was one of the instructions to the priests that they were meant, one of their uh, tasks was to keep the lamp burning all day and all night continually. It specifically said, God specifically said, this is a, uh, an eternal law or a permanent instruction, a permanent law, and should be carried out generation after generation. Wow, quite thorough. And that that's good for you and me because this was written a long time ago, but it lasts right down to my generation and your generation. So we can see that already that that's what God has in mind. Now, <clears throat> there's the, the two, there's some ph the physical aspects, you know, it's, a, it's literally a lamp stand, but it's fueled by oil. Okay, there's a lot of detail about the oil as well, which could be a, a whole other message or sermon because they had to, it was pressed olive oil that the people brought and gave, but even then it had to be made up in a certain way to be used. Anyway, <clears throat> the oil represents the Holy Spirit. Uh, Jesus, quoting from Isaiah, he said about himself, uh, he, he said, uh, God has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal and bring deliverance to the oppressed, to open blinded eyes. That's that in the Old Testament, oil, anytime they would use the word anointed, uh, it had to do with, it was, an, it was a thing that was done with oil. It always represented royalty. Uh, it always represented blessing, and we can see throughout Scripture that it truly symbolizes the Holy Spirit. And so Jesus said, in, instead of saying, I've been anointed with oil, uh, he said, it's by the Holy Spirit. And even in uh, Acts chapter 10, verse 38, we read there, uh, <clears throat> the, the writing of Apostle Paul is that uh, God has anointed this Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Again, he used that word anointed, which was reserved for a reference to oil being poured over. Anyway, oil is symbolic of the Holy Spirit, and we can expect, therefore, that the Holy Spirit in our lives, since we don't need a physical lampstand now, we are the whole temple of the Holy, of the Holy Spirit, and he comes inside us. And so we have light. The light of God comes inside. We don't become the light of God. His light comes inside us and shines through us. Uh, okay. So the, an example uh, is uh, when the Holy Spirit was first, again, it uses the word poured out in Acts chapter 2. And you think of, uh, you don't think of a person or a thing or a, or a divine person being poured out. You think of something like water or oil being poured out. But in Acts chapter 2, it says that about the Holy Spirit being poured out on the disciples. That was the first full outpouring of the Holy Spirit after Jesus' death and resurrection. And one of the evidence of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit was literally flames of fire uh, coming off the top of the individual's heads uh, that was there. They, they were not on fire. They were not 
being burnt by fire, but there was a flicker. Think like a candle uh, or a lantern, and the wick is, is burning off the top, you know? And that's ex they became human lights. They became human candles. They became a human torch, you know, without it hurting them. Rather, it empowered them, enthused them, and they went out... Uh, not, they went out doing good just like Jesus, but that good was not just, not just shaking a hand or hugging a neck or, or, or giving some food to someone. You know, uh, it, was, it was the kind of good that demons were cast out, that people who were at the point of death or paralyzed, they were healed. It was a Holy Spirit anointing. It was, a, it was an enlightenment and a power of the Holy Spirit that cannot come from any other kind of force, from no other source. It's not the kind of power that comes from a few days in the gym or taking your vitamins and getting good nourishment. Uh, it, it doesn't come by physical DNA or physical size. It's an anointing that can only come by the Holy Spirit, a divine anointing. This just gets me excited because I need, yes, I need God to be doing things around me, but oh, how I need God doing things in me and through me for my sake, okay, and also then so that I can be useful and of great benefit to those people that are in my life. That's my prayer for you, that you will be filled with the Holy Spirit daily, daily. And that Holy Spirit will be a fire, an enlightenment, will be an illumination for you and through you, for your situations and for all that uh, are around you and for the assignments that are on your life. Okay, so fueled by oil, this gives us God's perspective, therefore. It's not a human light that is going forth, but it is a light that helps us see. It's not a light that we can see because there's a physical window or a physical uh, brightness, but indeed their uh, doors and windows are opened into things that uh, with human eyes and with physical sight uh, or physical knowledge, uh, we, we would never get it. Uh, I hope that's coming across to you. God doesn't simply want you to be informed. He wants you to be transformed. He doesn't simply want you to know what's happening. He wants you to know it with divine perspective and know what is coming up in the future so that you're ready for it. Hmm. Some of you that are listening to this right there, you're going to literally have prophetic insight into future events and when it happens you're not going to say oh that's a cool deja vu you're going to say rather the Lord showed me this I'm ready also you, there's going to be some situations that you're not going to know what's hap going to happen but there's an enlightenment that simply you are prepared for it doesn't matter what's going to happen you're ready it's almost a bring it on, I'm prepared. Not because I'm just robust, but because God is in me, his light is in me and on me, and his Holy Spirit has literally taken up uh, me as a dwelling place. Okay, amen. Let it be in Jesus' name. In fact, the Holy Spirit is our teacher uh, John in the New Testament tells us that the Holy Spirit will bring us into all truth. Jesus said that, said even the Holy Spirit will remind you of things that I have said and enlighten my words to you. And then John said the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. So that's that work there. Now, the other thing about this uh, lampstand is that it uh, it was fashioned after a an almond tree okay uh, it seemed to be symmetrical uh, there was a center there was seven uh, top points that would have a a cup that was literally literally the lap uh, where, where the oil was lit okay and uh, so there were seven one was the center stem and there were three on each side 
<clears throat> but then the thing is full of almond, it's like almond branches as far as the way it was shaped and designed, the way the craftsmen were instructed to do it. Almond branches, almond buds, and almond blossoms, and almond petals. Okay, so the, the, the bud, so that, uh, this is beautiful to me, this represents the various stages of life and the various aspects of life. Okay, and when you've lived as long as me and maybe some of you that are listening, you recognize there are definitely seasons to life. We read about that when we're young, but once we've not only read about it, but we begin to experience different seasons and stages of life, we realize the important skill sets and the important benefits that we both need and we get uh, uh, during the different seasons of life. And so uh, the bud and uh, the, blo the blossom and the petals and the almonds, that represents all of those different stages uh, of life. Uh, and uh, there are those times, because a bud is just like a, the smallest protrusion of green off of a mature established branch of a tree, an older branch of a tree but it will have this little, little protrusion, and it's called a bud. And from that bud will come uh, either a flower or another uh, branch, or you know. But it will be new growth that will produce new fruit. And so all of that is represented: the old mature branches, the fresh new buds, the the things that are blossoming right now as uh, the, the petals, or even the petals, the foliage on the thing. Man, <laughs> may your entire life be fruitful. Every area of your life be fruitful. I pray that the oil of the Spirit will be in you ablaze and burning so that you are alive. Things on you, around you, and in you that seem old and tired and worn out for whatever season of life you're in. It just seems mundane and monotonous and boring, and I pray new life for it. I speak the life of the Spirit in that area of your life, that rather than it becoming dead wood, as they say, it will become a mature branch that brings forth new life. And I pray that even now you will be fruitful. Even now you will have fresh growth. And the petals represent beauty. There's even an aroma, a fragrant aroma from the petals of a blossom. May that be what you are. May you be, <laughs> may you be so full of productivity and fruitfulness that everyone around you will benefit, including you yourself. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, there's one more thing. And it is good, though it's going to sound bad at first. The lampstand was made of pure gold that was hammered. That's the way it was crafted. It was hammered. Well, the pure gold sounds good, but the hammering sounds uh, not so good. And the reason for that is simply because uh, hammering was a forceful process. But I, I encourage you with this. The, the uh, material was pure gold. Now, pure gold, not only is it beautiful and maybe the most valuable, if not the most, it's among the most valuable uh, uh, natural things in, in earth. Uh, also, it is tremendously uh, flexible and pliable, has a high tensility, okay? Now, so God is, is also letting us know right there that he has purified us. And so your life is flexible and pliable. Now our job in that respect is to yield to what the Holy Spirit wants to do. It is a forceful process of shaping that is required in my life. And so there is some hammering. Hammering is loud. Hammering is hard at times. But the hardness, I need to leave the hardness to the hammer. I need to be that pure gold that just 
takes it. It is shaped, and every blow of the hammer, it's not abuse, it's not punishment. Rather, it is the um, highly skilled work of a, of, a, of a professional craftsman, okay? They, they didn't get... They didn't just get Joe Schmo to come up here, hey, bang around this gold. And, no, no, no. They, in fact, if, as you read the rest of, the, of, uh, of Exodus, they even named some of the craftsmen. And they said that God had given them uh, the ability. That, so it was like an anointed or a, a spiritually empowered ability to be really uh, wonderful artisans and craftsmen. That's who's working on our life. It's God himself. The way uh, Jeremiah said it was that uh, we are the clay, okay, the moist, uh, wet lump of clay, and God is the potter that we're on the wheels spinning and he is shaping us with his hands. So every work in our life, even at times those things that seem hard or difficult, if we yield to God, we don't yield to circumstances. We don't yield to worldly stuff. We don't yield to self. We yield to God. We yield to his plans, knowing that how he wants to shape us will make this beautiful, um, will turn us into the beautiful uh, person that he wants us to be, that we will be beautiful to behold and we will be highly functional we will be a blessing to all, and um, and we are def we are de will definitely be all the more valuable after he has worked on us, and we have yielded to that process. I pray, as I close now, <clears throat> I pray that 2021, uh, you've already had your all night of prayer. We I say you, we have, uh, respectively. And uh, we've already sort of prayed in the year, but I pray every day the oil of the Holy Spirit and the light of God's brilliance and his goodness will shine on you, will shine through you, and will shine for you. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>